Howdy, AP Precal, it's Ms. Kosh. We are gonna look at section 2.7, the composition of functions, and we're gonna work through Mr. Passwater's notes today. Um, so it says, consider the function f of x equals two x minus three. F of five, well, we would just plug that in. Two times five minus three, that's 10 minus three is seven. Um, f of c means we have two c minus three, and there's nothing to do, we can do. F of four means we have two times four a minus three, which is equal to eight a minus three, there we go. And the next one, we have f of um, 5x minus 2. So f was 2 times something minus 3. That something is now 5x minus 1. I can clean this up a little bit. This is 10x, and then a minus 2 minus 3 gives me a minus 5. Okay, uh, sometimes in math, we'll plug in a value for x into the function and then use that output, uh, the answer, to plug back into another function. When we plug an output in of one function back into a function, that is called the composite function. Okay, so they're saying, um, what are they saying here? Find g of c. Uh, g of c. Oh, that's interesting. G of, <laughs> sorry, I have not seen a problem quite written like this. Um, well, g of, g of two, oh, 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 okay. Um, what we know is that, we know that g of two would be equal to three times two plus one, and they're saying that this is equal to c. Um, so this is equal to seven. Um, so g of c would be equal to, um, g of two is equal to seven, seven is equal to c. C is equal to seven, ha, huh, wow, okay. Um, I woke up with a stupid alert on my phone too early this morning, and I'm still grouchy about that. <laughs> uh, can I blame it on that? Um, okay, so anyway, now once we found C, then we can do G of 7, G of C, um, and plug that back in. So we have 3 times 7 plus 1, and this is equal to 22. Okay, there are two ways we can write composite functions, and both of these are read as F of X of X x usually so it's f and then it looks like fog and that's a little o thing or we can do f of g of x written like that and so both of these were read as f of g of x okay and that is when working with composite functions we start on the right what um okay if given this Evaluate, okay, we start in the center. I don't know, we start on the, we, we kind of, it's like, it's like you're working your way out of uh, a peanut M&M. Eat the peanut, you have the peanut, and then you do the chocolate, and then you do the, can, the candy shell at the outside. Use that answer from, um, from G of X and plug it into F of X, is how I would think through that. So I'm not quite sure what their, his intention was on that first part, but um, like I said, I'm <laughs> tired today. <laughs> Um, okay, so here we have g of 3 would be 6 plus 1 is 7. So this is going to be equal to f of 7. Plug that in here. That's 21 minus 5 is 16. Uh, comment below if I make an uh, arithmetic mistake. I don't care a whole lot. <laughs> okay, uh, plug in 3 to this. I have 9 minus 5 is 4. So then this is going to be equal to g of 4. Plug that in. That's 8 plus 1 is 9. Um, f of f of 4, okay, so let's plug in 4. I get 12 minus 5 is equal to 7. So this will be equal to f of 7. Plug in 7, 21 minus 5. Oh, we already did that. That's 16. Okay, using the equations f and g from here, find the expression. Okay, so f means we have, um, it's 3 times something minus 5. The something is now going to be g, which is 2x plus 1. So this will be 6x plus 3 um, minus 5 is minus 2. And then the other one, g was 2 times something plus 1. Uh, the something is the f, which is this right here, 3x minus 5. I feel like we've done these already. Um, 6x is minus 10 plus 1, and so it becomes minus, minus 9. Super. Hopefully that makes sense to you. Let's keep going. Um, now we've got some new expressions. Um, we have uh, h is 2x minus 3, and... We've got a linear quadratic, a square root, and another linear. And so they want us to do um, the compositions here. So I have, um, this will be k of h of 2. 4 minus 3 is 1. Uh, k of 1, where's k? Here it is. 1 squared is 1 plus 4 plus 5. 1 plus 4 plus 5 is 10. 
This is saying, I, and I prefer, this notation is accurate, this H of M of whatever, um, but it's easier for me to work with it when it's, when it's in this form because then you can kind of see where to start. M of negative one over here is going to be negative three plus two is negative one, so that's equal to H of negative one. H of negative one, negative two minus three is negative five. Okay, and then we see k of p of x, and um, k, okay, so p, oh, hang on. So k is, <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm tired today, I'm so sorry. Um, there was an alert for a county in, near Amarillo. I live near Dallas. I was so irritated. It doesn't affect me. <laughs> <laughs> I need to build a bridge and get over it. Okay, 3x plus 1 plus 4 times the square root of 3x plus 1 plus 5. I see like terms here, um, so I would just simplify this to 3x plus 6 plus 4 times the square root of 3x plus 1. Okay, hopefully that made sense. I was a little distracted as I was working through it, but uh, we took, let me just double check. We took the function p and plugged it into k. We had something squared plus four times something plus five. We squared that, the square and the square root cancel out, and there we go. Okay, now on this one, we've got a few different functions that he's asking us to look at. f is a graph, g is a chart, and, um, and h is a piecewise equation, and k describes something a quadratic function with a horizontal translation 2 followed by a vertical translation of negative 3. Okay, so this would be um, k of x would be equal to x, if we want to move this 2 to the right, minus 3, that would be that equation. Okay, so we have a bunch of these. This will be equal to f of g is here, g of 3. Um, with a table of selected values for g of, I don't see a g of 3. Uh, I wonder if you caught this typo later. Um, let's change this just so that we can do something similar. f of g of 5. I don't know. Um, we'll see if this works and it might not work on the other one. Uh, these can be a little tricky to write because you have to make sure all the pieces uh, correspond. G of 5. So I'm looking at an x value of 5 and my g value would be negative 2. So this would be f of negative 2. f of negative 2. Here's This is my function f, negative 2. That appears to be 2. Oh, good job. I mean, good job meaning I picked a decent little problem. Or I made up a decent little problem on the spot. Okay. H of f of 8 f of 8, I have to look back up here, f of 8, here's that, that's at negative 1, so this will be equal to h of negative 1. h is this, when I'm less than positive 1, I use this equation. Okay, so I have negative 7 uh, plus negative 3 is negative 10, take the absolute value of that, so this will be equal to 10. Um, okay, so now this is equal to g of, you'll notice I do rewrite those every time. k of 0 um, it means this is negative 2 squared is a positive 4, minus 3 is 1. So this is g of 1. Uh, and, I mean, these problems are tricky to write, so I don't know if he... Um, there is no g of 1. There's g of negative 4, negative 1, 2, 5, and 7. So we could change that problem if we want to, um, but I don't really feel like thinking through that. So anyway... Um, Unless I'm missing something. If you notice that I'm like that there was a that there wasn't a mistake and you see you see what I'm not seeing, comment below, but tell me nicely. Okay. Um yeah, a little civility goes a long way. Uh, okay, f of um, f of two, when I look at my graph, f of two, oh look, here's an open circle and here's a closed circle. So we have to use the closed circle because it's not defined up here, it's defined here. So this gives us f of one and that I wrote here. And now when I come back to f of 1, it's equal to the y value of 4. Okay, now I'm doing g of h of 1, and so h of 1 is this equation. When it's equal to 1, we equal negative 4. So this will be equal to g of negative 4. Oh, please be in the table, please be in the table, please be in the table. Ta-da! It is! Okay, g of negative 4 is equal to pi. Ah, lovely. Okay, oh, this is fun. Let's see how this goes. Um, this is g of f of h of k of 3, and I think we have 1, 2, 3, 4, so 1, 2, 3, 4 parentheses to close there. 
All right, so this becomes g of f of h of something. Um, and eight, k of 3 means that I come back to this equation that we wrote, k of 3. 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 squared is 1, minus, that's negative 2. Okay, so now we need h of negative 2. Let's go back and find h. Negative 2 is up here. It's, le it's less than 1. So that's negative 7 um, plus negative 6 is negative 13. Absolute value is a positive 13. So this becomes g of f of 13. Oh, well, guess what? This is a clever idea, but um, I'm seeing a problem. Unless I did something, unless you catch my mistake, um, f of 13, the graph only goes to 10. So that we can't do. Um, let me double check that I didn't mess up. k of 3. Well, let's see, a quadratic function with a horizontal translation of 2. Okay, 2 to the right means we're going to do a plus 2. Followed by a vertical translation of negative 3, down 3. I don't see how that would be wrong. When I plug in 3 to k, 3 minus 2 is 1, 1 squared 1 minus that is negative 2, which is what I wrote. Okay, h of, h of negative 2 is where it's, we're going to use this piece. So that's positive 13. Yeah, um... It was a fun problem. <laughs> a little tricky to write to get all those details correct, but um, very good. Hopefully that was helpful. Um, like, subscribe, comment, and all the things. Um, I hope you have a great day. Go practice.